You go, Chuck. Go ahead. Thank you. All right, I'll call this meeting to order. Good evening, everyone. This is the uh, March 23rd, 2021, regularly scheduled meeting of the Wellesco Board, Board of Education being held in accordance with the governor's executive order and being held virtually. Ellen, may we have roll call, please? Yes, Chairman Kerry. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Castillo? Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Granado? Present. Mr. Lesser? Here. Mr. Michaels? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Here. Mr. Riley? Here. Vice Chairperson, Mr. Healy? Here. Chairperson, Mr. Carey? Present. Um, I'll try again for Mr. Cassio. No, I don't believe he's gonna be making it tonight. Okay. And Weathersfield High School student representative, Tiago Wen. Here. All present. Thank you, Ellen. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and Mr. Riley, please lead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Riley. Moving Thank on you. to approval of previous board meeting minutes. Mr. Lesser, I believe you have a motion. Um, yes, I move the approval of the March 9th regular board of education meeting minutes. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Evans. Any comments, questions? All right, seeing none with a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, motion passes, thank you. Moving on to public comment. Mr. Emmett, anyone on the phone? Uh, no one on the phone this evening, Mr. Carey. Very good, and we had no emails. So public comment is now closed. Communications, Mr. Emmett. Thank you, Mr. Carey. Good evening, everyone. Uh, very pleased to report that Silas Dean Middle School welcomed back 486 learners to in-person learning yesterday morning. Uh, that equates uh, to 84% of the student body and is consistent with the numbers that we predicted back in November. Um, this is also consistent with what we're seeing at the elementary level as well. As of this afternoon, 80% of our freshman classes returned to in-person learning, while only 62% of our sophomores have returned to in-person. Um, we are projecting based upon our survey of approximately 80% of our uh, juniors and seniors coming back in on Monday. Tiago, we are looking forward to seeing you on Monday morning. I can tell you that. Uh, next Monday, uh, as I said, the juniors and seniors will come back and it will mark the full return for our um, students from pre-K through 12. Um, just want to mention a little bit about the travel advisory. Um, as of last Friday, the state has adjusted the travel advisory where it no longer mandates and requires quarantines or testing uh, for COVID. However, it continues to strongly recommend taking these steps if you travel. Uh, the state refers to the CDC and the DPH guidance, which currently discourages out of state travel altogether. Um, the reality is we know that people are going to travel over the course of vacation in April. So the best plan of action is to review the guidelines and continue to follow the recommendations. That includes quarantining and that includes testing if you've traveled. Again, with all of the communications that are going out announcing COVID cases or any changes to the learning environment, we are posting that uh, link to the CDC website as well as the link to the state website regarding your travel plans. Again, we wanna make sure that on the backside of April vacation that we do not see a spike in cases that result in increased quarantines. As you all know, with more students back into in-person learning, the uh, tendency to have to quarantine more students is higher. So again, let's everybody work together and enjoy that vacation, but on the same token, make sure that you are following those CDC guidelines so that we are all remaining safe. Um, as we talk about travel, we also continue to monitor cases. Um, this afternoon, I sent my 90th communication this year with regard to COVID cases or learning model adjustments, reopening or emergency closures for weather. So today was number 90. 
Again, um, unfortunately, we did see an outbreak within our athletic teams, which cost our boys varsity and JV basketball teams uh, the end of their season. Um, we also had our wrestling team, which was not competing, but was training, also have to end their uh, training sessions early this year due to multiple positive cases. Um, we also continue to see infections among siblings. The data reminds us that we must continue to stay vigilant and not let our guard down around our mitigation strategies. So again, let's, let's be careful out there. The uh, variants are out there and we're certainly continuing to see the spread. So mitigation strategies, the mask is a critical one, hand washing, staying home if you're sick and social distancing to the extent that we can. Again, our schools have done a great job of maintaining a safe environment. Um, we are not seeing any spread at uh, the elementary level, which has been great. And those students have been back in for over a month now. So again, let's keep up the good work, families. I'd like to uh, wrap up communications this evening with a thank you to Carolyn Fazina and Judy Keene and our friends at the Keene Foundation for their efforts this year in providing virtual enrichment programs for our students. Yeah, in spite of this pandemic, the Keene Foundation has done a great job of providing kids an opportunity for enrichment and learning opportunities outside the scope of the regular school day. So again, we're looking forward to being back in full time in the fall and having the Keene Foundation resume its great work with our students. So to Judy and to Carolyn Fazina, thank you so much for your efforts in providing our kids great opportunities. So with that, that's communications. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Emmett. Moving on to action items. Mr. Michaels, I believe you have a motion for us. Thank you. I move that the Weathersfield Board of Ed approve the superintendent to again submit a grant under the RFP to continue the family learning program uh, to generational learning for the 2021-2022 school year. Do we have a second? A second. Thank you. All right, Mr. Emmett, discussion? Again, I'm very pleased uh, this evening to have our friend and colleague, Kim Bobbin, with us, along with one of our um, members of this wonderful group. Um, so, Kim, I'm going to turn it over to you. I know you have a presentation. Ready to share. Go Thank right you, ahead. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. And I will try to be brief. So good evening, everyone. My name is Kim Bobbin. I'm the Family and Early Childhood Coordinator for the Town of Weathersfield. I'm employed by Weathersfield Public Schools, but I'm physically located in social services. This enables me to reach the families who need us the most. And I'm here tonight to share a little bit about our family learning program. In order to apply for this grant, we needed board approval, so thank you very much. I wanna give you an opportunity to meet one of our families and answer any questions you might have about the program. So the Family Learning Program is designed to give families access to a free, high-quality family literacy program. It's one central place where parents can come together to learn about early childhood education, parenting education, and to learn English. Um, it also promotes workforce readiness and career readiness of our families. The grant and the program have four components, which include adult education, early childhood education, parenting education, and parent and child together activities. It's a $50,000 grant, which is federal funds funneled through the State Department of Education. The program takes place in Trinity Episcopal Church. This year we were 100% virtual and we continued to have 24 families, which we were very excited about. Um, during the year when it's not COVID, we meet Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at the Trinity Episcopal Church. And I'd love to invite board members next year to come and check out the space and possibly be speakers in the program if you're available. These are all our partners, which are many. Um, so we have over 60 guest speaker slots. And one of the things we're most proud of is our ability to connect our families to resources and have them meet people in the community. I know um, Bobby Granado has come, Sally Distoli, Michael Emmett, and, um, and like I said, if board members, if you wanna come check it out, it's a really, really amazing program. But the grant has four main partners in addition to Weathersfield Public Schools, uh, Capital Workforce Partners, Vernon Regional Adult Base Education, the YMCA, and the Trinity Episcopal Church. One of the most amazing things about our program, I think, is the continuous two-way communication. 
So recently I've been talking to our schools a lot about how we're moving from parenting education to family engagement to school family community partnerships. And real partnerships with our families means that both we're speaking and we're listening. And so we use an app with our families called Viber and we are engaged with them 12 months out of the year. So we never stop. Um, the only rule we have is nothing after 8 p.m. because our little guys are sleeping and 8 a.m. in the morning. Otherwise, people will be pinging each other all night. Um, but it's really amazing that we're able to keep in touch all year. And even during COVID, we never stopped. So not even for a second. We just immediately went from in-person to virtual in March of last year. And tonight I wanna to introduce you to um, two of our rock stars. So this is Ivani and Lindsay. Lindsay started with us when she was two years old. Um, she's now four and she'll be attending Webb Kindergarten in the fall. And I'm proud to say that she is more than kindergarten ready. Um, her mom, Ivani, was a participant and a graduate of our Weathersfield PEP Parent Leadership Training Program. She was recently employed by Yale University in their social emotional learning program. Um, she created a program with some of her colleagues to teach Spanish to kids here in Weathersfield. And I'm gonna stop the share so they can say hello. They are very nervous, but I was very nervous too. So Ivani, if you just wanna say hi to everybody. Hi, my name is Siboni Montes. I'm from Peru. And I'm very thankful and glad to find this place to to continue learning English. And um, it's very special because I, I go with Lindsay and she learned and she is so happy to go every day. But now we are in, in online and they send like books for kids and worksheets. We work with Lindsay at home. This is very helpful for, for teach my kids too. And, we find um, if I need something, I ask him for resource for my kids and she support me and the rest of the families. Um, I'm so sad because this year is my last year because Lindsay is going to kindergarten in web. I have two, three kids. My son Matthew is nine years old and my daughter Allison is 13. She's in middle school. Um, thank you. And thank you, Kim, for all your support. You are a great person. I'm glad to meet, to know you. Same here, Ivani. How you doing, Lindsay? Lindsay. What did you bring tonight? Lindsay. What do you have? Lindsay's showing off a lot of great work. I like she's, it. She's throwing off all her crafts. Yeah. Uh, she brings, here is the, all the crafts we work together. And this is the time we'd spend with my daughter too. And um, she's ready for kindergarten. And she miss going person to the church. She say, I miss my teachers. I miss my, I miss my friends. And um, it's very nice because we know, uh, we, we learn about other cultures too. And I think so it's very important because we are uh, here from many countries and know each culture is very interesting and understand to the people from under other countries who are here to learn uh, English and the USA cultures too. And that's it, since you already approved it, I guess we can go home. <laughs> Sorry for my English. <laughs> Um, Ivani, you did great. So Ivani is actually graduating out of our program. Um, we do test participants when they come in and when they leave the program. And Ivani has completed ESL level six. So she's too smart to be in ESL anymore, um, just in time for Lindy, Lindsay to start kindergarten. Um, and thank you all for your time. If anyone has any questions. Ivani, I, I, I want to say that um, I think your English is perfectly fine. Yes. And I am looking forward to you uh, being one of our parent leaders at Webb Elementary School when Lindsay heads to kindergarten in the fall. And Lindsay, I was looking at your work and you are ready for kindergarten. So I will see you at Webb Elementary School in the fall. Thank you. Any board members with questions or comments? 
Ms. Granado. Um, thanks, Chuck. Um, Kim, can you tell me some details here how you did this virtual um, pre-K this year? Did everyone have a computer and everyone had Wi-Fi, everybody was hooked up and how did you get papers back and forth? Yep. Um, so one thing we did this year was we partnered with a program in Vernon. So Varabi has their own grant and their own program, but we decided since we were on Zoom, why not just combine it all together? Um, so we cover some costs and they cover some costs. So Vernon actually covered the cost to mail books and crafts to families once a week for 30 weeks. So that was actually paid for by Vernon um, and we're very grateful for that. So we have a preschool teacher in Vernon that mails those crafts to Lindsay every week. And because Lindsay's our best student, she gets extra credit, um, but we ran the program on Zoom. And so today we had music together class. We had a music teacher. The books are mailed home to the family. Lindsay and Ivani can pull out their music book. We sing together. Um, we do head, shoulders, knees, and toes. I, I need a curtain in my office because everyone in town hall can see me dancing. Um, um, but it's really amazing. It's really just designed to make sure that school is fun. One thing that we noticed that was really important was kids like Lindsay, their vocabulary improved so much because they were sitting next to their moms while they were doing their ESL adult education. So I would love to know, you know, have her language tested to see because I think our kids learned more English this year being home with their parents than they did when they were actually in the church with each other. So. Good job, Lindsay. That's awesome. She's still showing us her papers. She's still showing. Any other Any questions? Members? Mr. Lesser. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bonnie and Lindsay, thank you so much. Lindsay, your work is great. I love that she continues to hold it up and show us. That's great work. Um, Kim, I wanted to ask you, uh, first of all, Kim, outstanding. All the things you do for our families uh, and for our town is amazing. So thank you for all the great work. My question is around the 24 families. Is that how much the grant allows? Is the demand higher than that? I know I think we have 44 different languages spoken in the Wethersfield schools. So I know there's great need for these types of programs. I want to know if there's more people actually interested or is 24 families the max you can you can have with the grant so we do a lot with fifty thousand dollars so with fifty thousand dollars we employ a site administrator two adult education teachers three early childhood teachers and run a program for 30 weeks um, right now we haven't turned anyone away Usually we supplement the, this grant with um, funding from the Hartford Foundation, Liberty Bank Foundation, Office of Early Childhood. So we have yet to turn a family away, um, but we are limited by the space in the church and the number of child care providers. So if we had more families than we had child care for, we just need to find more money. And I would do that. <laughs> Great, thank you. I want to say something. Um, I came from Peru and this program helped to, to build my confidence too, because I have kids and I, I didn't know the cost, the costume of United States. And I think so this, this program helped for my confidence and to help my kids to be confident with, with the town, with the other peoples of America. Uh, this program is very helpful for us who came from other countries, I think so. Thank you. Thank you. Any other board members with comments or questions? Ms. Evans. Hey, Kim, this, um, this is great. And, and Vani and Lindsay, Lindsay, I love all your work. It's been so great seeing all the things you're working on. And I think this program sounds amazing. And you two just are so great. Lindsay, you could tell you're ready for kindergarten, right? We're very proud of you. <laughs> thank you very much for your presentation. And thank you both for being on, because sometimes being on these calls is a little intimidating. But we really appreciate hearing from you. Any other board members? All right. Thank you, Ivani and Lindsay, for coming and sharing your work. Lindsay, you look great. Miss Bobbin, thank you for all your hard work. Good night, so, everybody. Good night. We have a motion in a second. So all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Michaels, you have a motion for us. 
I do. We may need a snack break after it. I move that the Weathersfield Board of Education, pursuant to CGS section 1021.5F, certifies that all food items offered for sale to students in the schools under its jurisdiction and not exempted from the Connecticut Nutrition Standards published by the Connecticut State Department of Education will comply with the Connecticut Nutrition Standards during the period of July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. This certification shall include all food offered for sale to students separately from reimbursable meals at all times and from all sources, including but not limited to school stores, vending machines, school cafeteria, culinary programs, and any fundraising activities on school premises sponsored by the school or non-school organizations and groups. And further move that the Board of Weathersfield Board of Education will allow the sale to students of food items that do not meet the Connecticut nutrition standards and beverages not listed in section 10-221Q of the Connecticut General Statutes provided that the following conditions are met. One, the sale is in conjunction with an event occurring after the end of a regular school day or on the weekend. Two, the sale is at a location of the event. And three, the food and beverage items are not sold from a vending machine or school store. An event is an occurrence that involves more than just a regularly scheduled practice, meeting, or extracurricular activity. For example, soccer games, school plays, and interscholastic debates are events, but soccer practice, play rehearsal, and debate team meetings are not. The regular school day is the period from midnight before to 30 minutes after the end of the official school day. Location means where the event is being held. Thank you. Do we have a second? A second. Thank you, Mr. Riley. <laughs> Mr. Emmett. Mr. Kazaka, any uh, comment with regard to this? This is a uh, document that we uh, have approved before the board each year. Any specific? Yeah, comments? sorry, Lou. That is the the state language that they require in the motion and then once it's approved by the board we forward that to the state but the language has been unchanged for several years and it's the program we continue to run all right any board members with questions or comments that has to be the longest motion of the year don't you think <laughs> close Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure someone was paying attention there. So glad I didn't have to read it. Good job, Lou. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. And Mr. Healy, I believe you have a motion for us. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, under action items, I would move that the board approve actions items C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J as recommended. Uh, from the subcommittee vote and recommendation uh, from last week, or excuse me, earlier this week. Excellent, and we're gonna consolidate those? Yeah, we're gonna take them all at once. We can discuss them as much as you want once the motion's on the table. So I would move that C through J be approved by the board. Thank you, do we have a second? Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments before we pass it over to Mr. Stoley? Yeah, I just real quickly, I I was unable to attend this uh, and share this meeting and it was a personal matter which worked out fine. I thank everybody for inquiring about it. I'm sorry I couldn't be there. I've been briefed on it and it all looks uh, fantastic. A bunch of, uh, of, uh, of courses coming forward and the teachers are excited about it. And I, I'm sorry I missed it, but uh, uh, everything I've been told, I would urge everyone to adopt it. And I know Sally's gonna explain it some more. Thank you, Mr. Soli. Yeah. Sure, yeah, student programs and services. We had an overview by uh, several teachers and two curriculum specialists regarding the um, curriculum revision process to align our curriculum to the Next Generation Science Standards, or NGSS. So um, a teacher-led committee, which was a district science committee, um, has been meeting uh, pre-pandemic to really identify a three-year process. Obviously, with the pandemic, everything has uh, slowed down a little bit this year. Um, this is the first year of units uh, that have been finished to align with the inquiry standards. They have a high emphasis on modeling and other um, skill-based or 
scientific practices found in our standards. Um, and when we heard from the teachers, we really heard um, and saw these units come to life in their classrooms and how their instruction has shifted towards a more inquiry-based approach. Even our youngest learners, um, we had heard from teachers about what it looks like as young as second grade and their ability to ask questions and solve problems um, and uh, the high engagement of the science units within their classroom. Um, so over the next few years, you will see uh, year two and three or 3B and 3A and 3B come forward as part of the continuous revision process as we work to align our science curriculum to the next generation science standards. Um, and if I could just follow up to Mr. Healy, um, I think you're exactly right as other board members have shared with you, um, the teachers did a fabulous job and I just wanna thank them for their leadership. The science committee has been a a committee that's led, led by teachers and they have found creative time to meet during the day and also during the summer for curriculum revision. Um, and so thank you to their efforts and for all the teachers that have been involved in this curriculum writing process. Thank you, Mr. Stoli. Any board members with questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Riley. It was a, a great presentation and uh, there was a, a quote I got that was uh, quite striking and it said that Science is no longer the disseminator of knowledge, but a curator of curiosity. So I think that comment was we're not, you know, we're not just teaching to people, you know, to the students, the students are learning and being able to, you know, put put ideas into practice. So it was it was a very good presentation. So thank you, all the thank teachers and, and everyone. Thank you, Mr. Riley. Anyone else? Yes, Ms. Granato. Um, I, it, it really was amazing. And it was so much fun because it's a different type of teaching science. It's an exploratory way to teach um, matter, to teach weather. Um, and to hear these students start out with a model, then they have a hypothesis, and then they question it, and they research it, and then they have a final model to see what is really true. And um, I have to tell you, it, it's just an amazing sequence of events that these children do to make an exploratory science lesson. Uh, uh, you know, thank goodness these teachers are there with them right by their side, um, because this is really going to bring them somewhere. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Mr. Stoli, for all your work on the curriculum with the teachers. With a motion and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to announcements and information. Please check your packet for upcoming committee meetings. If you can't make it, please let the committee chair know. Board of Education's meeting held. The Memorial Day Parade on 310-21. The Correct Council on 317-21. Ms. Granado. Okay, the CREC Council met on Wednesday, March 17th, and the CREC Council is the Capital Regional Education Council, which Weathersfield is a member, along with 35 other surrounding towns. This council is responsible for the regional magnet schools and project choice. They have also organized and are working on a Hartford Head Start. The meeting started with a slide presentation on how the CREC budget is constructed in many ways, a similar fashion to the construct of town budgets, but CREC has revenues, they have services and state tuition monies that are part of this process. Executive Director Greg Floria spoke of having presentations to the council going forward that focuses more on each of the magnet schools under CREC. He also commented on the successful vaccination program for staff members. And we heard from Patrice McCarthy the CAVE and CREC uh, liaison to the General Assembly. She discussed the educational bills before the General Assembly and the priorities of diversity and equity in education. Um, thank you, that'll be it. Thank you, Ms. Granato. Uh, Students Programs Service Committee 317-21. Is there anything else to add other than what we went over? No, it's I don't unless Sally does. It's just obviously we acted on what the a good part of the meeting was uh, this earlier this week. 
Very good. Mr. Stoli, anything to add? Sure. Uh, I'll just provide a little bit of an overview around the social emotional learning um, updates. So at the elementary, we had representatives from the elementary, middle school and high school committees to provide an uh, overview of the work we've done on social emotional learning and selection of an explicit um, SEL curriculum. Um, so independently of each other, uh, the three committees have selected a program called Rethink Ed. So we've learned a little bit about the Rethink Ed and uh, the committees also shared a little bit about their next steps as they continue to work on an implementation plan, um, discussing professional development and supporting teachers through implementation of that um, SEL. I think one of the powerful messages uh, from all three committees was a lot about the why and all the reasons why having an explicit uh, social emotional curriculum is important for our students. So we look forward to providing some more updates next year as we go through this process. Thank you. Moving on to Finance and Operations Committee, 323-21, Mr. Michaels. Thank you, Mr. Carey. Uh, we met this evening. Uh, we are currently 556000 $211 under budget. Uh, that's an increase of a little over 56,000 uh, due to some realizations uh, throughout the different budget lines. Uh, we spoke briefly that we do not have a date yet for our combined Board of Ed uh, Town Council meeting to go over uh, budget information. The superintendent uh, told us that we are still waiting on uh, more details on the ESSER two funding and the recovery funds as well. So we're waiting on that from the state and some guidance on how and what that can be spent on. Um, and then Mr. Kazaka shared with us and there'll be more coming out to uh, the town about lunches uh, during vacation week uh, and Chartwell's uh, providing those. So look for that information coming out uh, shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Michaels. There is no unfinished business, no meetings being scheduled, no unfinished business. Public comment, Mr. Emmett, anyone on the phone? I have no one on the phone, Mr. Carey. All right, public comment is closed. Moving on to board comment. Any board members wishing to make a comment? Ms. Paradise. Um, I, I don't know, Michael, maybe you can help me here. Um, is Kim Bobbin's position is paid for some of the board and some had to go to town council, I think you told me. Has that been solidly firmed up or we still got to wait for them to vote on the budget? I mean, she's doing all this work, which is great work. But I yeah. just want to know that she, is she pretty much, in your opinion, like it's fine with me, solidly solid for us, you know what I mean? Yeah, she is solidly within our budget. Okay. And, I mean, that's, that's a position awesome. that you, you saw tonight that mm -hmm. that position really pays for itself and what oh, she's yeah. done in terms of bringing in grant funding and what she does in terms of, you know, we talk about shared services. It really is a shared position. And uh, I know on the Board of Ed side that is in the budget. I have no intention of cutting that. I, obviously, we're waiting to see what town council budget looks like. I would have to say, knowing what Kim does on the town side, that it will be a position that is funded on the town side as well. So thank you, Elaine. Yeah, all Definitely in our budget. Sure. Thank you. Any other board members? Ms. Granado. Okay, there is a couple other um, programs that add to the Weathersfield School System curriculum. Um, one is the Keen on Kids Coalition, and, and Michael gave a nice shout out tonight um, to Carolyn Fasina and Judy Keen. But their meeting was held virtually on Thursday, March 11th, and their after school winter program has ended, and it did have a good turnout. They did it on Wednesdays. There was much interested in the virtual science enrichment program, which will continue this spring along with an enriching art program. The science program is very valuable to our fifth graders who will be taking the science test this spring based on the NGSS standards. And a virtual field trip is planned with the fifth grade focusing on engineering. Park and Rec is now organizing, and love this, for summer camps and outdoor activities. Um, energy assistance is available to families and AARP tax assistance is also available to families. Um, the department is working with Central Connecticut Health District to coordinate small vaccine clinics. Um, and in, oh, and in 2021, food share will be paring down. There was a food share um, virtual meeting too this past week. And food share will be paring down from 15 to eight hunger action teams. Weather still hunger action team will continue under Sarah Hill. I'm very pleased to say that. 
The conversation continued on adding another town or towns to our team and that's to be continued. All mobile food share locations are operational. Rentschler Field Food Drive, which is Thursday, um, Tuesday and Thursday from 9.30 to 1. The last day is April 29th. Um, SNAP applications for families can be done over the phone. Please call social services. And that is it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Granato. Mr. Lesser. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, two questions uh, for, for, for Michael. Um, first is, do we have a percentage or a number of teachers slash staff that have been vaccinated? Um, and are we continuing that process of offering that? Or are the teachers and staff on their own after we offer the initial uh, places for them to go? And I, yeah, with regard to uh, a percentage at this point in time, Kenny, I don't have a specific number. I'm looking to get that from Hartford uh, Healthcare. Um, we offered a total of actually three clinics. So we offered the fifth and the seventh. Those were both Johnson and Johnson. Um, we also offered an additional clinic on March 13th, last Saturday uh, at 1290 Silestine Highway. Um, that was a Pfizer clinic. So I know I have some staff that went to that. In addition to that, we uploaded everybody into VAMS. So I had staff members that had gotten their own appointments uh, through VAMS. But we'll be reaching out to Hartford Healthcare um, because those um, recipients had to register through MyChart Plus. So I should be able to get a, a general figure in terms of the number of Weathersfield um, folks that actually um, registered for vaccines. So. Great, thank you. My second and last question is, I'm really pleased with all the, like we all are, all the kids coming back to school and juniors and seniors, Tiago's class coming back on Monday. But Michael, when you mentioned the numbers, I think if I heard you right, you said 80% of freshmen uh, started and 62% of sophomores. And I actually have a sophomore and can ask her, but that seems to be a fair discrepancy. Do we have any sense of why and I think you mentioned that it, you anticipate about 80% of seniors, juniors and seniors coming in. So it sounds like the sophomores are, you know, fairly significantly uh, less in, in returning to school. Any thoughts on why that might be? Yeah, you know what, it's it's difficult to tell. I don't think that the high schools come up with a, a true reason at this point in time. And I think that, you know, what we're looking at also is over the course of time, will we see more kids come back? You know, one of the things we talked about at the elementary level is since we reopened on the 8th of February and the 22nd of February, have we seen parents pull back out and have their, their kids go to remote learning? And the opposite has happened. It has been more parents saying, all right, we've gotten through another month. You guys have your stuff together with regard to mitigation strategies. We're sending our kids back in. So I've got some elementary schools that are up you know, in the 90, 91, 92% of students back in. I do think that over the course of time, we're gonna see more kids come back in um, at the high school level as well when they hear that, hey, my friend is back. Um, or they you know, see that things aren't as um, you know, quiet in the cafeteria. And I have to say, having been in the cafeteria before and after, there is definitely more buzz. Now, with that being said, they're still socially distanced. We had to reopen the small uh, gym to have the overflow there to be able to spread kids out. But the other thing that we're doing, um, Kenny, with regard to the nice weather we've had is we're gonna be bringing in a couple of tents so that our seniors, um, you know, again, we like to honor our seniors, right, Tiago? Um, one of the things we're gonna be doing is providing seniors the opportunity to eat outside under the tent with their friends in the nice weather. So it creates less, um, you know, bottlenecking in that cafeteria and provides us the opportunity to continue to socially distance. So, and, you know, just so you know, one of the things that we've done, we've had the remote Wednesdays and remote Wednesdays, actually tomorrow is our last remote Wednesday. Um, one of the things we do with the remote Wednesdays is we kind of reallocate staff and we've done a lot of home visits. So Mike Barabalt, who is our interim security director, will go out with um, high school security guards to knock on doors, to find out what's going on with families, to um, provide support. We have ongoing uh, meetings with regard to attendance um, to try and make sure that we're bringing these kids back in um, to district and getting them re-engaged. So that number of 62% uh, we definitely need to see that go up. 
I think the other thing we need to make sure that we mention tonight here is the issue of the remote learners. And this has been the challenge of, do we go full in? Do we go hybrid? Do we continue to allow the opportunity for remote learning? What does remote learning look like? I will tell you that the idea of continuing remote learning um, into next year is one that we're waiting on the state to provide us clarity on. I will also tell you that the sustainability of our current model of remote versus in-person is really not sustainable. So we're gonna have to look at what remote learning looks like next year. I mean, certainly we're hopeful that all of our students are back in our classrooms and being able to socialize and get that experience. We know in some cases that it may be a situation where there's some medical fragility and there's ample reason for not being in, but we're certainly looking for all of our students to be able to come back in. So that's 62%, Kenny, I'm certainly hopeful over the next few weeks as the rest of the high school comes back, we're gonna see that number go up. Got it, thank you for everything, Michael, appreciate it. You're welcome, thank sir. You. Tiago, you, you want to make a comment, please? Uh, yes, I did. So just some like quick updates on, in particular, the senior class. Um, again, like you know, um, the senior class and the junior class, the upperclassmen are heading back to school next week. This is something that like, I guess I'm very excited for. And I know several of my classmates are very excited for. And especially uh, the, the possibility of eating outside under the tents is something that many seniors are very ecstatic for, myself in particular. And on to the discussion, uh, the discussion about prom and graduation details continues. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Emmett for working so closely with us. We have another meeting on Thursday to discuss more details. And I'm going to be gathering some more uh, seniors together to talk about, I guess, some final decisions, some final ideas that they may have. And I guess that's going, that, that's what's going on. So thank you so much. Thank you, Tiago. Mr. Riley. I just wanted to say that the uh, uh, selecting the Weathersfield High School principal is a, a great experience. And thanks so much to Trent, Mike, and Sally for making that an efficient uh, process. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Michaels. Thank you, Mr. Carey. Uh, Michael, just wondering if you could give some more clarification to us about as we ramp up the last few grades coming back to school, what the Wednesdays will look like past April, there was much talk when the April calendar came out to find the half days uh, on Wednesday. So I'm just wondering if you can give some clarity to parents who are at home uh, as far as Wednesdays moving forward. Sure. Yeah, at this point in time, uh, next tomorrow will be a remote day. The 31st next Wednesday will be a regular school day and that will be in lieu of Friday. It is Good Friday and we're off. So we're going to be able to see the kids for the um, four days next week. Beyond that, the first week in April was a pre-planned early dismissal for professional development. So we've planned professional development with teachers. The following week is our vacation week. And then the two weeks beyond up to the end of April are in school days with early dismissals. And the genesis of this was brought about by our leadership teams at the school level that expressed the concern about needing to be able to continue to work with remote learners and keep kids engaged. Um, as you know, over the course of this school year, we have gone on a month by month basis, um, given the fact that the pandemic really kind of drives the bus and the uh, virus tends to uh, make the decisions, unfortunately. So we've continued to go with a month by month basis. My hope and my expectation is we're gonna continue to see the number of remote learners dwindle as the vaccination rate continues to go up. Um, as you may know, on April 5th, seniors like Tiago will be eligible to get the vaccine. I'm certainly hopeful that all of our eligible students, age 16 and older, will take advantage of the opportunity. So I do see the early dismissals on Wednesday ultimately phasing out. Um, we had a, a conversation with the Weathersfield Federation of Teachers. They'd certainly like to see it continue. And we're trying to strike that balance. And obviously I can tell you, um, knowing how difficult it is for teachers to try and balance having 18 students in their class and two or three at home uh, has been a challenge. And I will also say the other challenge I've heard not only from here in Wethersfield, but across the state, the inconsistency of how some families are utilizing remote days. 
where we're going to have a student we expect to be in person suddenly shows up on the computer. And it's a major challenge for our teaching staff who has prepared a lesson for the student to be in only to find that the student is at home. So again, a lot of challenges with regard to this, but we're again, trying to strike the balance here. So my expectation is into May, our final full month of the school year, my hope is, is that we will be in full day, all day. So hope that answers your question, Lou. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Ms. Evans. Thanks, Jack. Um, I have uh, one question for Mr. Emmett and just um, two quick comments. So I heard from a ton of teachers um, about how quickly you guys put together those vaccination clinics and how easy it was and how efficient it was. And I was super impressed and happy to hear that. And everybody seemed really happy to be able to get there and get it in so quickly. That couldn't have been easy, but everyone I talked to was like, oh, I got in and out, I'm already done. I'm like, I'm jealous. <laughs> so I wish my job did that. Um, so I'm sure that wasn't easy, but thank you so much for that. And then, um, all the kids that I'm seeing are so excited to be back. So obviously I see at the elementary level, but it's so awesome to see them so happy going in. And it's just so great. It's just bringing like a ton of light to this awesome spring. So um, that's really fun. And then the only other question I had is now that we've been back full time for a little while, at least at the elementary school level, we're still not seeing the school, um, like people picking up the virus from school. It's still basically community spread rather than in the schools. Isn't that correct? Yeah, at the elementary level, definitely. The only uh, time that we have found spread that we believe occurred within the school was the most recent situation with the uh, athletics. And uh, that was one thing, Kelly, when we started to see that trend reached out to uh, Charles Brown at the Central Connecticut Health District and also reached out to the State Department of Public Health, provided them with that, that data. Um, it also involved, because the team, one of the teams was involved in a game on Friday, March 12th, it involved um, having to quarantine the opponent, that team as well. So there's a domino effect, which is unfortunate. Now I can tell you, I had a conversation with that superintendent today and no members of that basketball team have uh, been infected. So I am hopeful we have been able to hold it off. But again, as I mentioned earlier in communications, another one of the things that we're dealing with is siblings. So, you know, we have students that got it through athletics and now we have other siblings that have gotten it as well. So we're still definitely seeing the family spread um, and the community spread. Uh, karate coaches, uh, youth hockey. Uh, we had to quarantine several students related to youth hockey today. Uh, we've had some quarantines around dance teachers that have tested positive. So again, as we're out in the community, the variants are out there. Um, we've seen a couple hundred cases of the UK variant, um, a handful of cases of the South African variant. And I know that there's a new variant they're talking about actually from New York City, which is uh, becoming pretty prolific. So we continue to monitor. I continue to meet with the Department of Public Health on a weekly basis. I meet with the uh, CCHD on a weekly basis, and I meet with my uh, fellow colleagues of the Greater Hartford uh, Superintendents Association as well. So we're continuing to monitor, and again, we'll do the best we can to make sure our uh, students and our staff are safe. Thank you, Kelly. You're doing, thank you very much. I think you're doing a great job. I feel very comfortable with the kids going back, their masks, and every, I think they're all doing really, really good with kind of a mask adherence and all of those good mitigation stuff. So Thanks again. I just wanted some clarification. Thank you. Definitely a team effort. Wouldn't be possible without our parents and our staff. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, Mr. Healy, you have a motion for us? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I move that the uh, Board of Education leave public session, enter an executive session at approximately 7.50 p.m. for the purposes of A, Discussion of a strategy with respect to collective bargaining with secretary, paraprofessional, and nurses units, and B, mid-year review of superintendent's goals. And do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Granato. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries, thank you. We'll enter executive session now. Good night, everyone. Good night, Tiago. Thank you. Good luck Good night, next week, Tiago. Thank you.